Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you how SQS service works uh, in AWS. Uh, SQS was the first service that was launched by AWS and uh, it is basically a distributed queuing system that helps decoupling producers and consumers and uh, quickly scales your application. So uh, in this video I'm going to create a queue and show you how you can send and receive a message uh, to it. So let's go to SQS. Uh, you, you, you'll, you'll be able to find SQS under messaging. Uh, so let us, yep there we go it is under application integration you can simply click it. And once you go here I already have a queue but I'll go ahead and create a new queue. Uh, let's call it uh, my queue so uh, just to explain a couple of things uh, for this queue uh, first of all uh, SQS is a region specific system so when you create a queue uh, it will be created in a particular system so make sure you select region from the top here so for me it is uh, AP South 1 which is uh, Asia Pacific Mumbai so uh, next attribute that you want to configure is default visibility timeout uh, default is 30 seconds uh, so visibility timeout is basically the timeout after which the message will be visible to other uh, consumers again. So let's say for example a message is pending in a queue and a, and a consumer comes up and picks up the queue that is when uh, the visibility uh, timeout trigger starts and if in 30 seconds the consumer is not able to process this queue uh, the message from the queue then the queue will be, the message in the queue will be available to other consumers to process so if you think that 30 seconds is not enough for your message to be processed after it has been picked up by a consumer then you might want to consider increasing the, increasing this uh, maximum retention period this is the time uh, in for which the queue the message will be uh, persisted in the queue that you have created uh, so default is four days uh, which should be sufficient but you can go ahead and change it as per your use case next you have maximum message size uh, the maximum that AWS provides is 256 KB but uh, if you want to change it if you think that the maximum size is uh, could be less in your case then uh, you can go ahead and change this but uh, I, I think this should be left as it is uh, you can also set a delivery de delay in which your messages will be sent to the consumer or visible to a consumer after this much delay after it has been posted to uh, the queue by the producers. Uh, finally you have receive uh, message wait time this is basically used for long polling so generally what happens is whenever a consumer polls for the message it returns immediately if the message is not available and if there are n messages it will re return the n messages back to the consumer uh, with a maximum of 256 KB payload limit uh, but if you turn this on uh, your polling will each polling request will wait for this much timeout period before uh, it uh, a message is available on the queue right it will not uh, basically time out and return immediately so if you want to save up on cost you might want to turn this long polling on finally we have a dead letter queue setting uh, this setting is basically uh, configuration for another queue so let's say if your message has been read by consumer uh, for five times and it has not been processed successfully then it will basically go to this dead letter queue and that essentially means that there is some problem with your message due to which uh, your consumer is not able to process uh, this particular message so that brings me to another important point uh, that your consumer needs to explicitly delete the message from the queue after it has uh, processed it otherwise the message will still be pending on in the queue and after the visibility timeout it will be visible to other consumers as well or, or the same consumer as well right so it is the uh, responsibility of the consumer to delete this message after it has been uh, processed by it so uh, those are the uh, settings that are available when you create a queue so let us say let us keep the name as my queue and I will keep the other settings as default and I will click on create queue uh, now uh, you will see that uh, there's a unique URL associated with the queue that you can use to poll 
so for this demo I'm going to uh, create a simple polar using AWS Lambda because that's the simplest thing to do so I've already created a Lambda called SQS consumer I'm just gonna go ahead and explain what it does over here so let me just uh, maximize the screen okay so first of all obviously you need AWS SDK uh, you need to provide a region for it and then you need to create an SQS client uh, from the AWS uh, finally you need to give uh, the queue URL to the queue SQS queue that you had just created so let's go ahead and copy this uh, queue to uh, this particular variable so once you have done that uh, you have a parameters that you need to set in order to uh, call the polling request so in this uh, the important thing that you need to see is the maximum number of messages uh, is one so in the in a single polling request it will either return back with no messages or one message not more than that uh, finally this is the handler that gets called uh, so here we are calling sqs.receive message uh, and we send the parameters that we just created above to this function and this will return uh, the messages in data and uh, error in the error parameter if it is uh, some error has happened so first of all we are uh, printing the entire data just to see how uh, the entire schema of the data looks like and if there is an error uh, we are simply calling back uh, the callback method with error and printing what the error is however if there are messages then we are we are printing the number of messages uh, since we have given maximum number of messages as one uh, if this does get get printed then this should always print one finally we are printing the messages message the all the messages uh, the first message and finally the message body so message has multiple attributes so this one prints the entire message whereas message body prints just the body finally as I mentioned earlier you need to delete uh, the message from the queue after it, it has been processed so this logic does the same thing so you have delete parameters uh, you provide queue URL to it and a recipe handle uh, that you get from the message that you have received and finally you call sqs.delete message and if you do not have data loss messages that means that uh, there is no messages in the queue and it will just print no messages received so now that we have configured this let's go ahead and try to uh, run this uh, lambda so let's go ahead and save this and run test alright so something broke alright uh, let's just check if we have given correct alright so I think uh, E is missing here so let's go ahead save it again and test it again so now you can see it says no messages received that is because if you see in your my queue there are no messages available so let's go ahead and uh, create uh, basically publish a message to the queue so let's say hello world and send message and if you refresh you will see that one message is available and nobody is polling it yet because there are no consumers active consumers right now uh, also remember that SQS is a poll based mechanism than a push based unlike SNS so a consumer needs to explicitly poll for these messages and this is where lam lambda comes into picture now that we have one message uh, if we run, th run this lambda now uh, you should be able to see that message so let's go ahead and run it uh, as you can see it first printed the data this is the entire schema of the message that is received it will print number of message received one that is because we have said maximum number of messages that it can pull is one uh, finally uh, it will print the received messages and also the body so you can see that we had given hello body hello world as the body and which is which gets printed and finally uh, we go ahead and delete uh, the message that we have received so if you refresh this uh, you will see that messages available are zero uh, now just to prove that uh, your messages are not deleted until and unless your consumer deletes it let's go ahead and uh, comment out this code uh, that deletes your uh, SQS message so this should suffice so let's go ahead and save uh, let's go ahead and 
uh, add a message let's see hello hello world again and send message now once you do that you'll see there is one message that is queued and let's go ahead and run it again uh, now you can see it got hello world again but now uh, if you see if you refresh this you'll still see that one message is still available and if you run this again you will again get this message because this message is not really deleted so it is the responsibility of the consumer to explicitly delete the message after it has uh, processed it uh, lastly I wanted to conclude it conclude this video by talking about pricing uh, of SQS so 1 million requests are free for an SQS uh, so each request is basically one polling request that you make uh, but make sure that uh, one polling request should correspond to 64 KB so let's say you have a message payload payload of uh, 264 KBs which is the maximum limit and uh, that is uh, what is received in one polling response then that divide by 64 uh, will be your number of requests which you will be charged for right which is four requests for that so keep that in mind and uh, it is fairly cheap and you can turn on long polling uh, if you wish to reduce your cost further and you can use SQL to easily scale your applications in the cloud so thank you